Another organelle inside of cells is the mitochondria. Mitochondria, you may have, if you've had biology uh, in high school, you might remember these. These are like the powerhouse of the cell. This is where cells can produce energy molecules called ATP. We'll be looking at this in more detail in the next uh, couple of chapters. So we're just gonna mention it in passing for now. Mitochondria on the inside, they have all of these folds, these membrane folds back and forth. And um, those folds are important places where chemical reactions take place. Those folds are called Christi. And again, we'll come back to that in a later chapter. Chloroplasts are special organelles. These are what allow some things to photosynthesize. So chloroplasts, these are not present in animal cells, right? We cannot photosynthesize. We can't go out in the sun and make energy, um, but plants can. And these organelles are what allow plants to do that. So these are in plants. They're also in algae, like what grows in swimming pools. Chloroplasts are capable of taking in light energy and converting it into the form of chemical energy. And the place where they do that is in these green little stacks. Um, these are called grana, or granum would be singular, grana is plural. Anyway, these stacks, these membrane stacks, are where that uh, um, energy conversion takes place. And those stacks are floating in a fluid called stroma. Okay, so here is a schematic of a chloroplast. Right here, this is an actual image, an electron microscope image of a chloroplast. Mitochondria and chloroplasts do complementary things. Okay, so the chloroplast, what it does is it takes in light energy, converts it into molecules, so it converts it to chemical energy. And then what we're gonna be seeing in the next couple of chapters is that mitochondria take chemical energy, they take food molecules, and uh, what they do is they harvest the energy from it and produce ATP. These are, these um, basically these have to work together um, in order for the whole cycle to work out. We'll see that more later on. Just wanted to mention it right now in passing. So plant cells, a couple of special, well, three special things about them, things that plant cells have, but animal cells do not. Okay, definitely those chloroplasts that we just saw, that's one special organelle that plants have. Plant cells also tend to have cell walls. Animal cells do not have cell walls. Okay, so in the case of a plant cell, uh, they, they do have the plasma membrane that's shown in this very thin yellow line right here, that's a plasma membrane, but then right outside of that, they have a nice thick cell wall. And that's very important for plants, that provides protection and helps to keep the plants nice and rigid, plant cells nice and rigid. The third thing that plants have that animal cells do not is a central vacuole. That's this big space right here. This is where plant cells store extra water. And of course that's very important for plants. Plants need water in order to be able to do what they do. Um, so that central vacuole is something that we see in plants, but not in animals. Otherwise, a lot of these organelles are the same. You can see the nucleus, rough ER, smooth ER, the gold G, mitochondria, those are in um, all eukaryotic cells, plants and animals alike. Special thing about mitochondria and chloroplasts, well, another special thing, other than just their functions, is that they have their own DNA. Okay, so this is kind of like an exception. We said in general, DNA is housed in the nucleus. Here's the exception to that. Mitochondria and chloroplasts have their own DNA. And because of that, they're able to reproduce themselves kind of independently of what's going on in the rest of the cell. That's a really handy thing. I just want to mention to you about like when you exercise, if it's been a while since you exercised, then um, the first time that you get back up and do it, you might be really sore the next day. Okay, uh, but then if you come back a week later and you try it again, it might be a little bit easier. You might not get quite as sore. And that's because your cells have been doing something special in the meantime. The mitochondria in your cells have actually been duplicating and uh, mitochondria are what provide you with energy in order to do things like exercise. And so the fact that mitochondria can sort of decide to, to um, divide whenever there's a triggering event that, that makes them think that that's a good idea, that's a really good thing. That means that you can adapt to situations around you relatively quickly. The cytoskeleton of the cell. We are almost done with our tour of the cell. The cytoskeleton 
is a network of fibers that provides support for all of these organelles and structures we've been talking about. Um, the cytoskeleton is is really neat because it's um, it can be reformed so it's not necessarily stuck in the form that it is currently rather it can be dismantled in some regions and built out in other regions and this allows cells to be able to move actually so we kind of like to think of the cytoskeleton as being both the skeleton and the muscles of the cell it provides support and also allows movement some cells like amoebas can actually move by using their cytoskeleton. So some cells are capable of crawling and that's just through the process of dismantling their cytoskeleton and rebuilding it. So I'd like to have you take a look at this video. And what you're seeing here is an amoeba. This is this whole thing is one cell. You can see some of the organelles inside. There's a um, little organelle right there. Here's another one right here. And what's happening, you can probably see this, is the cell is gradually moving to the right. It's moving in this direction. The way it's doing that is it's pushing out the cytoskeleton. It's making those fibers extend in this direction and it's dismantling them over on this end. So it's retracting the fibers from over here. So pretty neat, that's how an amoeba moves. Okay, uh, speaking of the cytoskeleton, actually let me just back up here for a second. The cytoskeleton, I forgot to say anything about this picture. Here is a picture of the cytoskeleton inside of some cells. This is one cell that I'm outlining right now. And what we can see is the nucleus in blue. And then the cytoskeleton is all of these fibers that you see around it. Um, okay, so the cytoskeleton is built from microtubules. These are protein fibers. And the interesting thing with microtubules is they can be used for a few different things. They can form the cytoskeleton like this, and then they can also be used to form some specialized structures. Let me just jump forward here to our last slide. Okay, some cells have special structures built from microtubules. Flagella, these are basically um, tails that some cells have, and they are tails that can move. They can whip back and forth and allow this cell to move. This is a great way for a cell to be able to swim through a liquid environment. Um, so flagella, this is something that a number of bacterial cells have, uh, but also in the case of humans, the sperm cells do have a flagella, and that allows for a movement. Another structure that can be built from microtubules are cilia. Cilia are generally a lot shorter than flagella, and usually there are a lot more of them. So this is a cell that has lots of cilia on the cell surface, and cilia just kind of wave back and forth. They tend to move in a coordinated fashion. A great example of this in humans is in the, um, in the trachea, in the respiratory tract. A lot of the cells in the respiratory tract have cilia, and what they help to do is catch debris that you might breathe in. Maybe the air is kind of dirty. When you breathe in that air, the cilia uh, sort of stick to that debris, and then they move, and as they move, they sort of bring that debris back upwards, up your throat, and eventually you can either cough it out or swallow it down with your spit. Um, so cilia do a very important job of keeping your airways clean.